Yeah. Um, so your bugle uh, will play the last post from just behind where they're feeding now, so pretty much in front of the reed. In front of the what? In front of the reed. Okay. And the fly pass is coming, uh, holding above Parliament House and then coming directly this way. So okay. So pretty much above where that picture is. Great. Thank you, Jay. Matt. Matt. Yeah. Sorry. Call it Jay. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The 10th Annual Bomber Command replaying ceremony will commence shortly. I now ask that you take your seats and to maintain the dignity of the occasion, please could I ask you to turn off your mobile phones or switch them to silent. I am pleased to advise that Memorial will be live streaming today's ceremony through our Facebook Live and YouTube Live channels. Veterans, widows and family members of Bomber Command, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my name's Richard Cruz and I'll be your Master of Ceremonies this morning. To begin this morning's proceedings, number 460 Squadron of the Royal Australian Air Force will march on. March on, 460 Squadron. Ladies and gentlemen, the Royal Australian Air Force Catapult Party, provided by Australia's Federation Guard, will now mount the Bomber Command Memorial.
I would now like to invite the Honourable Dr Brendan Nelson, Director of the Australian War Memorial, to deliver the welcome. Thank you, Richard. Veterans of Bomber Command, your friends who are no longer here, but who are here in spirit, the families who love and support you and your descendants. I'd like to recognise quite a few dignitaries that are here this morning, not for their sake so much, but for the sake of those whom they represent out of respect for all of you and what brings us here today. Senator Linda Reynolds, CSC, representing our Prime Minister, the Honourable Malcolm Turnbull, and her husband, Robert. Ms Gay Brockman, MP, the member for Canberra, representing the Leader of the Opposition, the Honourable Bill Shorten. Ms Brockman is also the Shadow Minister for Cyber and for Defence. The Honourable Amanda Rishworth, the Shadow Minister for Veterans. Air Marshal Leo Davies, our Chief of the Australian Air Force. Air Chief Marshal Sir Angus Houston, retired patron of Bomber Command Association and Lady Liz Houston. Mr Keith Campbell, OAM President of Bomber Command Commemorative Day Foundation. Dr Ron Horton, DFC, President of the Bomber Command Association of Australia. Air Marshal Jeff Brown, retired patron of the Bomber Command Commemorative Day Foundation and of course former Chief of the Australian Royal Australian Air Force. Mr Robert Dick, the National President of the Returned and Services League. Air Vice Marshal Roxley McClellan, representing the National President of the Air Force Association. Major General Mark Kelly, retired our Repatriation Commissioner. Major General Dave Chalmers, the First Assistant Secretary for Commemorations and War Graves. Wing Commander Carl Harrison, the Commanding Officer of 460 Squadron and Leading Aircraft Woman Laura Pearson. Squadron Leader Callum Carmichael, representing the Commanding Officer of 462 Squadron. Commandant Brigadier Cheryl Pearce, the Commandant of the Australian Defence Force Academy. The representatives of the embassies and high commissions that are here from the United Kingdom, New Zealand, Netherlands and the Slovak Republic. The representatives of the Salvation Army and of the Red Cross. The distinguished guests, many of you that are here today, members of the public. On behalf of the Chairman of the Council of the Australian War Memorial, Mr Kerry Stokes, AC, and his wife, Mrs Christine Simpson Stokes, and the other members of the Council, we welcome you here to the Australian War Memorial. At the other end of Anzac Parade, across the lake, resides our Parliament, the political capital of our nation, where we exercise the political, economic and religious freedoms that too often my generation in particular has taken for granted. But here is our nation's soul. Here we reveal who we are. It's not the building, nor the artefacts, nor relics that are exhibited within it. But it's the stories of two million Australian men and women who wear and have worn the uniform of the Royal Australian Navy, the Australian Army, and the Royal Australian Air Force. It was at Pozier, France, in 1916. Charles Bean, the official war correspondent, witnessed to 23,000 casualties in six weeks that one of our 6,800 dying asked him, will they remember me in Australia? And from there he conceived and resolved at its end, he built this, the finest memorial to these men and women of the Australian Imperial Force. In 1948, after the events that bring us here today, he finally articulated the vision for the Australian War Memorial to which we remain true. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved. And here we guard the record which they themselves made. There is no more important part of that record than those of you who served in Bomber Command. At the heart of the Australian War Memorial, in the Hall of Memory are 15 stained glass windows, 
each a depiction of a serviceman and nurse of the First World War, silent sentinels above the unknown Australian soldier. Under the image of the airman, the antecedents of the Royal Australian Air Force, he is one of the 15 words informing character. Chivalry. Because Charles Bean, John Trelaw had seen in these airmen the values and codes of the chivalric knights of courage, honour, integrity, courtesy, justice, a readiness to help others irrespective of the cost. And then in the opposite corner, in the Byzantine inspired mosaics of Revenant, it is one of your own. A young airman, member of Bomber Command, standing in the ruins of a cathedral. Napier Waller's reflection of the moral ambivalence that many felt about what you did on our behalf. Standing in the ruins of a cathedral, depicting the absurd futility of mankind. We build civilizations only to destroy them. You did what was asked of you. You did it knowing that the chances of death far outweighed those of survival and the gap between the reality of what you did and the commemoration and honouring of it has been far too long. Cologne, Lübeck, the Ruhr, Berlin, Hamburg, Dresden. And just one of those 3,486 dead out of air crews was Flight Lieutenant Kevin Hornibrook. On the night of the 23rd of August 1943, German aircraft gunners and night fighters shot down 56 bombers. His aircraft was shot down by a German night fighter near Berlin. Two gunners had been killed, three other crew members bailed out. With the bomber in a death dive, pilot officer Alan Bright, Horny Brook's bomb aimer, was the only one left with him. Horny Brook, despite the immense force of gravity pushing him back, reached the escape hatch in the nose, grabbed Bright and pushed him out the hatch. Bright said, Kevin never got out. We'd been too low. My life hinged on that moment when Kevin pushed me out. When my son was born in 1951, I called him Kevin to remind me every day of Kevin Hornibrook to, Oa, to whom I owed the rest of my life. Never a day goes by without me remembering that he was the first at the door and could have easily saved himself. Kevin Hornibrook is buried in the Berlin War Cemetery. His two gunners, Florence Chesson, age 21, and Flight Sergeant Graham McLeod, RAAF, age 20, are buried next to him. This place to which you come today, for many of you, as you know, your spiritual home, reminds us of two things. Firstly, to never succumb to the temptation of being human beings, to settle for broad brush strokes, headlines, popular imagery and mythology of our history. Our comfortable lives breed easy indifference to individual sacrifices made in our name, devotion to duty and to our country. This place will never allow us to do that. The second, particularly in the shadows of facing resurgent totalitarianism, this place reminds us that we are Australians. There are some truths by which we live. They're worth fighting to defend, politically, diplomatically, and at times, militarily. You are the best of the best generation. And long after you have gone, to join your friends who came before you, we will guard your record, we will honour you, and we will do so not only every year, but every single minute of every single day. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Nelson. And now I invite Mr. Keith Campbell, President of the Bomber Command Commemorative Day Foundation, to deliver an introduction. Senator Linda Reynolds, CSG, representing the Prime Minister, distinguished guests, veterans, family, friends and supporters. 
We are again privileged to be here at the Bomakama Memorial at the Sculpted Garden, the Australian War Memorial. This is one of the first memorials to Bomakama to be built and represents a searchlight with a crew of a four engine bomber at the base. It commemorates the veterans of Bom Bomber Command who flew over enemy territory from 1939 to 1945. Those who did not return are also remembered at the war cemeteries of Europe and on, on the walls of remembrance at Runningmead and the fortunate ones who survived. The air crew consisted of approximately 10% of the personnel of the Bomber Command Station. The support of the ground staff, mechanics, parachute section, armourers, the WAF and catering office, office staff and all others enabled the aircraft to be operational. Bomber commands consisted of airmen from the RAF, RCAF, RAAF, RNZAF and from all parts of the British Empire and from others who escaped from Nazi-occupied Germany to join the RAF. The RAAF contributed approximately 12,000 aircrew and some hundreds of ground staff, all volunteers. The aircrew from the, were from the Empire Air Training Scheme which contributed many thousands of trained aircrew to the RAF to replace the horrendous losses of Bomber Command Squadron. More than 4,000 aircrew from the RAAF were, were casualties. The uh, Australians also served on RAF squadrons as well as RAAF squadrons. This year also is the 75th anniversary of the commencement of operations of RAF squadrons in Bomber Command. The memorial here in Canberra was dedicated in 2005. This was followed by the unveiling of a magnificent memorial to Bomber Command in Green Park in London in 2012. The unveiling was attended by an official group of Australian Bomber Command veterans led by Major General Mark Kelly, who is here with us today, and organised by the Department of Veteran Affairs. Many other veterans and their families and friends from Australia were also present. Today is the 10th annual Bomber Command Commemorative Ceremony. These commemorative ceremonies are the result of the, of the organisation formed by Royal Kingston Smith, together with other veterans, which became the Bomber Command Commemorative Day Foundation, and which has since been held annual commemoration services at the Bomber Command Memorial. We are supported by the Australian War Memorial, veterans, families of veterans, friends of Bomber Command Association in Australia and the Royal Australian Air Force Association. This support is very necessary to enable the commemoration ceremony to continue in the future and we thank them for their support. The Red Cross is also rep represented here today those of us who were POWs remember with gratitude the food parcels, the sporting equipment and the clothing we received at the time. They made the difference between existing and surviving. Commemoration days such as today are not meant to glorify war but are a reminder to all of us of what we owe to those who gave their lives so we could enjoy our way of life and the freedoms that go with it, which are the envy of many other peoples and nations. We welcome our new patron, Air Marshal Jeff Brown, who recently retired as Chief of Air Force. Our thanks also to Dr. Brendan Nelson and his staff at the Australian War Memorial for their support over the years and for the organisation of today's ceremony. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Campbell. I'd now like to invite Senator Linda Reynolds, representing the Prime Minister of Australia, to deliver the commemorative address. Well, good morning, ladies, gentlemen, distinguished guests all, and particularly to the veterans of uh, all conflicts who are here today and to the family members who are here to commemorate their loved ones. I'm very proud to be able to represent the Minister of Defence and also the Prime Minister and the Australian Government at the 75th anniversary of Bomber Command. And I'm particularly honoured to pay tribute to the Australian men and the women of Bomber Command for their services during World War II. Just over two decades after the end of the Great War, the war to end all wars, Australia once again answered the call to arms and went to war in the British Empire's cause. The grim memory of the First World War was still fresh in the national consciousness, but Australians answered the call in their hundreds of thousands. There was a glamour in the Royal Australian Air Force and an appeal driven by a sanctuary, a belief in the sanctuary in the air that didn't exist on the ground. But such was the nature of the air war over the northwest of Europe that although many had hoped to be fighter pilots, the majority, over 10,000 Australians, were posted in Send to Bomber Command after extended training. And every single one of them was a volunteer. Despite accounting for just 2% of Australian enlistments, the Royal Australian Air Force suffered 10% of all Australian casualties. The casualty rates amongst bomber crews was particularly shocking. The standard tour for bomber command crews was 30 operations, where the chance of survival had dropped to just 40%. 55,000 bomber command personnel lost their lives, including over 4,000 Australians. These airmen continued on operations knowing full well the increasing odds of them returning after every single operation they went out on. This is a testament to their courage, to their heroism, and to their commitment to their crew. Bomber crews were not assigned. Instead, they formed their own seven-man teams, resulting in them forming unshakable bonds of trust in each other for their lifetime. Bonds that lasted a lifetime but no matter how short their lives proved to be. Too many of their stories are untold and they're already lost to history. But today I'm very fortunate to be able to share with you two stories of my own family stories of service in Bomber Command. They're stories of two young men who served with great distinction as Bomber Command navigators. After defying the odds, both went on to live very different but equally fulfilling lives here in Australia with their families. The first was a rugby mad young lad from London's East End, Wally Walter Boatler. My uncle Wally enlisted in the Royal Air Force and he flew 70 operations in theatres of war, 70 operations. He was wounded, he was mentioned in dispatches and he was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross. He survived the best the Germans, the Italians and the Japanese could throw at him. And afterwards he became navigator on the King's flight and later for Sir Robert Menzies. My Uncle Wally was a true gentleman in every single sense of the word. For 25 years he served in his beloved Royal Air Force. He moved to Australia after marrying my Auntie Bobby, a very vivacious young West Australian nurse who he met when he was on posting here in Australia. Wally and Bobby lived a long and very happy life together, running their small business in Perth. Their two children, my cousins, Sally and Peter, I'm delighted are actually here joining us today. They both gave their parents great joy, as did their six grandchildren. The second navigator is a Hurstville boy who had a happy but a very modest upbringing and education. Gordon Stanley Reid enlisted in the Royal Australian Air Force. He was quickly commissioned and transferred to a Pathfinder 4 squadron and he became a highly skilled navigator in a famed Lancaster bomber. Gordon returned home to Australia with his English wife Ruth, who was the great love of his life. Uh, very fortunately for me, they had four children as the youngest child, Robert Reed, 
is uh, my partner today and who also joins me here today. Gordon Reed was a most gentle man with a towering intellect and a very distinguished career. He was Sergeant of Arms of the House of Representatives, an SAS, an author, a lecturer, Professor of Political Science, Deputy Vice Chancellor of the NEWA, and also then Governor of Western Australia. But as we all know here, successful operations are never all just about the air crew. Today, here at this place, we also remember the many Australian men and the women who kept Bomber Command flying, the ground crews, the Women's Auxiliary Air Force, um, the medical personnel, all of them came together to keep the bases running. They drove the bomber crews to their aircraft and they returned them to the briefing room for those who actually returned home. Their voices guided weary and relieved crews home to bomber stations all across Britain. And also we remember those at home who for years anxiously waited for any news of their loved ones. The fathers, the mothers, the sweethearts, the sons, the daughters, praying every single day when they saw that postman come up to their house that he would be delivering a handwritten postcard or letter and not that dreaded telegram. Today's commemoration forms part of the Anzac centenary which is the most important commemorative period in Australia's history. Australians have always joined Great Britain and our allies to defend democracy, as we still do here today. And on behalf of the Australian Government, I extend our great and our deepest thoughts and sympathy once again to the people of the United Kingdom, as they once again face the, the threat of uh, attacks to their democracy. But today, I am very proud to stand with you all and commemorate the men and the women of Bomber Command who served with such extraordinary bravery, with heroism and commitment to their nation and to democracy, lest we forget. Thank you, Senator Reynolds. I would now like to invite Bomber Command Veteran Mr Ray Merrill to deliver the reflection. Veterans, veterans, relatives and friends, Senator Linda Reynolds, distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm honoured and privileged to have been asked to do reflections on this day, the 10th anniversary of our Bomber Command commemoration and the celebration of the 75th anniversary of the commencement of Bomber Command strategic offensive in World War II operations. This day does not glorify, glorify war, but it does allow us to remember and honour all the personnel who flew with Bomber Command, especially the 55,573 airmen who made the supreme sacrifice and this figure includes 4,050 Australians. Our thoughts also go to Wing Commander Rollo Kingston Smith, who would be a very proud and satisfied veteran if he could be with us today. His dream of seeing this commemoration day become the third most attended ceremony to be held at the Australian War Memorial after Anzac Day and Remembrance Day. Personally, I joined the RWF in Adelaide on Anzac Day 1942. After initial training in Australia, some of the fellows went to Canada, we departed Adelaide for England on the motor vessel Denbyshire, as did one of our colleagues, Ross Pearson, eventually arriving in Cardiff before transferring to Brighton and into an operations training unit at Westcott. At Westcott, we formed a crew of seven, which comprised three Englishmen, two Australians, a New Zealander and one Mauritian, in which I was the rear gunner. It was mateship, and in an instant our lives changed forever. We went from the, met the teenagers to men in a very short time. After completion of training, we were sent to 218 Gold Coast Squadron RF at Woolcock, Woolcock, sorry, Woolcock Lodge and started a lifetime of experiences which money could never buy. During training and operations, the ground crew were greatly appreciated. They were pivotal people to our survival. 
They took pride and pleasure in maintaining the bombers in perfect operational conditions. Also, you could never forget the WAF drivers. They took us from briefing to dispersal, and if you're damn lucky, from dispersal back to debriefing. Our spare time was spent in a variety of ways, like sightseeing, socialising and spending time at our favourite pub. I personally developed an interest in greyhound racing with a special liking for a dog named Bluey. He only had one eye, his left, and when he drew the rowers in the race he was unbeatable. Bluey was due to race in Sheffield on the same day I was invited to Buckingham Palace, so I had to make a decision. Bluey went to Sheffield and won. I went to Sheffield. My commanding officer was not happy with me, but I have to this day never regretted my decision. <laughs> On the subject of leave, I must make mention of the English people who took us into homes and treated us like their own family. They were kind, tough, brave and resolute and needed to be after all that suffered from the intensive and extensive area of homies. In addition, they also had to deal with a flying bomb or the buzz bomb of the doodle bomb which Hitler introduced in June 1944. Our thoughts also we were always with our family, especially our parents, who we knew suffered immensely during our absence. They spent the duration not only missing us, but also not knowing if or when they received that written telegram. My contribution to Bomber Command was 36 missions, all with the same crew, and mainly uneventful apart from a few black holes. Our only major concern was when we received some incendiary bombs in the back of our Lancaster. Fortunately, they were quickly dealt with. Sadly, they came from one of our own. The highlights of my tour of duty was D-Day. On this historic day, six Sterlings from C-18 squadron, each with a crew of 13, formed Operation Glimmer. The sole purpose of this diversion was the dropping of window or strips of foil over the English Channel to simulate a naval fleet headed towards the French coast near the port of Calais. The operation which was intended to draw German forces away from the real landing sites of 100 miles to the southwest was riddled to the success of Operation Overlord, which was the landing at Normandy. It was to the credit of the pilots and navigators of the 2 squadron that the German shore batteries opened fire on the ghost fleet they created. In addition, two German panther divisions remained at Port of Calais for at least two weeks after D Day. Of course, they still believed that the D Day, that the Calais would be the site of a major British operation. This mission was a complete success. On our return to base, we saw the invasion fleet moving towards the French coast. The sight, I can assure you, was breathtaking and unforgettable. 617 Squadron also did something similar, and they called that uh, uh, Operation Taxable. All squadrons involved in Bomber Command were magnificent, but I take the liberty to make mention of 463 Squadron out of that because we commander Roller Kingston Smith was his first commanding officer and my brother Fred was also a pilot with 463. 463 was formed on the 25th of November 1943 when a flight of Lancasters as supporting staff were transferred from 467, sorry, 467 squadron. They were stationed at Waddington and assigned to five groups. Throughout the course of the war they undertook 2,525 sorties. They dropped over 11,000 tonnes of bombs and they shot down six aircraft. This squadron had the highest casualty rate of any Australian bomber squadron deployed in Europe during the war, with 78 air aircraft being lost and 546 airmen killed. Of this, 225 were Australians. This squadron really deserves a mention. There are members of this squadron with us today, fortunately. They must feel immensely proud. There was a quote from the RAF of an Ember Fund which summarised, I think, our involvement in World War II, and it reads, Bomber Command did not win World War II independently, but it could not have been won without their efforts. The Australian RAF's attacks forced Germans to divert invaluable men, guns and aircraft and equipment to defend this airspace, effectively opening a second front long before D-Day. The young men of Bomber Command face dangers that today we can barely imagine, all in defence of our freedom. The sacrifices and extraordinary courage had, could never be forgotten. Many aircraft of Bomber Command performed deeds of unbelievable bravery and courage. They were appropriately awarded and they included 19 Victoria Crosses. You came here today to remember and honour the men of Bomber Command for this we thank you. In closing, may I say I was a rear gunner with 218 Squadron RAF that will always remain immensely proud and honoured to have flown with Bomber Command. Everyone have a safe trip home.
Thank you, Mr. Merrill. I now invite Chaplain Mark Willis to lead us in prayer. Today we come together in prayer and in so doing we recognise the hope that we can have in Almighty God. Prayer is the nexus between the seen and the unseen. It is the connection between humanity and the sacred. And it is where we come to receive comfort and peace. My name is Mark Willis, I'm chaplain with the Royal Australian Air Force and I'll be praying out of the Christian tradition. So let's pray. God our Father, we acknowledge that you are the Almighty One and that in you alone we may find comfort and peace. On this day, we remember those who served and lost their lives whilst flying with Bomber Command. And we pause and we honour them. And we remember with thanksgiving their courage and devotion to duty. God, help us to follow the example of those who died to do our duty without fear or favour, to live courageously and when necessary, to fight for justice, for truth and for mercy. May all nations and their citizens choose to respect the rights and dignity of every human person and work together in overcoming all conflict and evil that promotes hatred, war and division. Father, bless all those who lead us in public office. Give wisdom and a sense of righteousness to all who have authority over us, so that we might be governed with justice in peace. Show us how to bring peace to our communities, that we may be worthy of the sacrifices made by so many, and may peace fill our lives. May all people's needs be met, and may the better world we dream of come quickly. And finally, Lord, may those who sacrifice themselves for an ideal be remembered with pride, and may we hold fast with your help to their hard-won gift of freedom and peace. And may you bless us and remain with us always. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Chaplain, Chaplain Willis. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're able, please stand and join with the Australian Rugby Choir in singing the hymn, God is our strength and refuge.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Wreaths will now be laid at the Bomber Command Memorial. The first wreath this morning will be laid by Senator Linda Reynolds, representing the Prime Minister of Australia, and Wing Commander Jonathan Huff, representing the British High Commissioner, and the Honourable Manda Rishworth, MP, representing the Leader of the Opposition. Air Marshal Leo Davies representing the Chief of the Defence Force and Wing Commander Kim Salmon representing the Commandant of the Australian Defence Force Academy and Mr Robert Dick, National President of the Return and Services League of Australia. Mr Keith Campbell, President of the Bomber Command Commemorative Day Foundation, and Dr Ron Horton, President of the bon Bomber Command Association of Australia, and Air Vice Marshal Ross Lee McLennan, representing the National President of the Royal Australian Air Force Association. Wing Commander Cal Harrison, Commanding Officer Number 460 Squadron, Squadron Leader Callum Carmichael, representing the Commanding Officer Number 462 Squadron, Air Vice Marshal David Rogers, Pathfinders Association. Air Commodore Mark Lax, past president, Canberra Legacy. Lieutenant Colonel Sam Poe, the Salvation Army. And Miss Wendy Prowse, the Australian Red Cross. Thank you. 
Mr. Rob Spence, Veterans and Friends of 460 Squadron, Mrs. Rosalind Ingram, Bomber Command Commemorative Day Foundation, and Mrs. Annette Gutierrez, Bomber Command Association Australia, and Ms. Gay Brodman, MP, Member for Canberra. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll just momentarily hold the ceremony, won't be long. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I would now like to invite Australian Air Force Cadet, Cadet Warrant Officer Erica Roberts, to deliver their impressions. I would like us all to take some time to reflect upon the bravery and sacrifice of those who served in the Second World War in particular those who served in the Bomber Command operations who we commemorate today. As we reflect, I would like to share a poem with you titled High Flight by John Gillespie McGee Jr., a member of the Royal Canadian Air Force who served in World War II. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the sky on laughter-silvered wings. Sunward I have climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-slit clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up the long, delirious, burning blue, I've topped the windswept heights with easy grace where never lark or even eagle flew. And while with silent lifting mind, I have trod the high untrespassed sanctity of faith, put out my hand and touched the face of God. Thank you, Cadet Warrant Officer Roberts. Ladies and gentlemen, could I ask you to please stand as Major General Dave Chalmers recites the ode. After the ode, the last post will be played, followed by a minute of silence, 
and the Rouse. If you feel comfortable and can do so, please remain standing for the National Anthem. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. And I now invite Chaplain Willis to deliver the benediction. Father of mercy, dispel the shadow of death with the dawn of new life. Enable us to press forward 
that after our course is run, we may reunite with those we love, where every tear will be wiped away. We pray for families and for mates who feel the loss of loved ones, and we ask that in your infinite grace and in your mercy, you will provide comfort and peace. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make the light of his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord watch over you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Willis. Ladies and gentlemen, Squadron Leader Gordon Johnston will now provide the thanks and farewell. Veterans, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. On behalf of the Bomber Command Commemorative Day Foundation, Incorporated, I'd like to say how honoured we are to have with us Senator Linda Reynolds, CSC, representing the Prime Minister, and Mr Robert Reed. And the Chief of Air Force, Air Marshal Leo Davies, AOCSC, representing the Chief of Defence. Senator Reynolds, the commemorative address was most inspiring. It's wonderful that our RAF veterans have received so much praise from the Army side of the House. Thank you. Our thanks are extended to Dr. Brendan Nelson, AO, Director of the Australian War Memorial, without whose support and that of his staff, we would not have been able to have had such a successful commemoration over these two days. Air Chief Marshal Sir Angus Houston, aka AFC retired, patron of the Bomber Command Association of Australia, and Lady Liz Houston, thank you very much for coming. Representing the National President of the Royal Australian Air Force Association, we welcome Air Vice Marshal Boxley McKenna. Thank you. We also note the attendance of Mrs Gay Brodman, representing the Leader of the Opposition, and the Honourable Amanda Wishworth, Shadow Minister for Veterans Affairs. We welcome the attendance and the contribution of the representatives of the British High Commission in Wing Commander Hoff, the New Zealand High Commission in Group Captain Abraham, the Kingdom, the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in uh, Brigadier Jacobs, and the Embassy of the Slovak Republic in Mrs Langer. Very good to see Major General Mark Kelly retired, AODSC Commissioner of the Department of Veterans Affairs, and Major General David Chalmers, AOCSC, the First Assistant Secretary, Commemoration and War Graves, Department of Veterans Affairs, and Mrs. Merrily Cuthbertson. Air Marshal Jeff Brown, AM retired, Patron of the Bomber Command Commemorative Day Foundation, and Mrs. Amanda Brown. Brigadier Cheryl Pierce, AM, Commandant of the Australian Defence Force Academy, and Mr Paul B. Number 460 Squadron was resplendent in providing an honour guard. And I see the commanding officer of 460 Squadron, Wing Commander Cal Harrison, sitting proudly down there. A big thank you to Australia's Federation Guard in supplying an all RAF catapult party. I note that Squadron Leader Callum Michael, Carmichael, is representing the commanding officer of 462 Squadron. No ceremony such as this would be complete without a fly past, which is due any moment, I believe. We thank the RAF for the day's fly past when it occurs. We sincerely thank the band of the World Australian Air Force, particularly the Quintet under Sergeant Stuart McGregor, who played most heartfelt music for us last night and during the ceremony this morning. We thank the cadets of the Australian Air Force Cadets Number 315 Squadron, who's commanding officer of Flight Lieutenant AFC Jeff Tanner. We thank the Australian Rugby Choir, whose singing was so pertinent to the occasion. We also thank the Canberra Squadron of the Australian Air League for their attendance and their help today. Proudly sitting with us today 
Our veterans and survivors from Bomber Command, who at 18, 19 and 20 years of age were captains, wireless operators, navigators and gunners in those aircraft who flew, <coughs> who flew and survived sometimes over 40 missions against terrible odds. Your courage and fortitude are a continuing lesson to us all. One veteran commented to me, we were flying over Germany with a fair amount of flak coming around us when I felt the aircraft shudder. I looked out the engines and wings to check for damage and saw only a few small holes. So we continued on and dropped our bombs, then turned for home where we arrived to an exclamation from the ground crew. What have you done to our aircraft? Look at all the damage. <laughs> it was only then that we saw that we had really suffered more than just a few small holes. But we got the job done. I made a job to a comment to a Halifax gunner friend of mine, but he could not miss the target as the pathfinders had marked it so well for him. His reply, his reply was, all those chaps did was to alert the enemy that we were on our way, so they were awake and ready for our arrival. <laughs> marvellous how different people have different uh, feelings in the thick of a battle. Over the years we have remembered the diminishing number of veterans in our midst. We also remember those who died over Europe and those who were prisoners of war. Mr Ray Merrill of EFC gave us a great insight into the conditions in which Bomber Command members flew and maintained the aircraft and the sheer courage and determination to complete each mission that has made them such a group of whom will always be proud. With the assistance of the Australian War Memorial, the Bomber Command Commemorative Day Foundation is determined that we will never forget them. Those of us who follow these veterans are grateful to the French government for recognising the courage of the members of Bomber Command for their part in liberating France by awarding them the Legion of Honour, one of France's most prestigious awards. It was very interesting to hear Cadet Warrant Officer Eric Roberts' poem. Cadet Warrant Officer Roberts, of course, is from number 315 Squadron, Australian Air Force Cadets. Excuse me if I'm a little bit biased in praising them. Thank God to our bugler, LAC Jason Reeve, whose stirring rendition of the last post and Ravalli will stay in our hearts. That was marvellous. We thank the veterans and all the young people here today whose duty it will be to continue the leadership shown by the members of Bomber Command. We also want to thank the MC, Mr Richard Cruz, for guiding us through the ceremony and our chaplain, Mark Willis, for your stirring words. And all the chaplains involved with Bomber Command all those years ago. We thank Legacy represented by Orc, uh, Air Commodore Mark Lax, retired, which organisation was so ably looked, has so ably looked after the widows and children of our Bomber Command mates. We appreciate the attendance of Mr Robert Dick, National President of the Returned and Services League of Australia, and Mrs Vivian Dick. Air Vice Marshal David Rogers, AM, patron of the Pathfinders Association. Uh, we want to recognise the attendance of Mrs Wendy Prowers of the Australian Red Cross and of Lieutenant Colonel Samuel Foe of the Salvation Army. Both organisations seem, always seem to be exactly where they are needed when trouble brews. We thank the committee members of the Bomber Command Commemorative Day Foundation for all the hard work in arranging these ceremonies. And of course, the ceremonies and functions held over these two days would not have been the success they have been but for your attendance. Thank you one and all for your help in continuing to remember the courage, audacity and gallantry of all who made up Bomber Command. Thank you. Thank you, Squadron Leader Johnson, for those very kind remarks. 
Ladies and gentlemen, in a very few minutes, we will have the pleasure of witnessing a fly pass to the Royal Australian Air Force FA-18 Hornet from 77 Squadron. Please be advised that this aircraft is very loud. Stand by. Yes, it will be off to your left. This FA-18 Hornet is flown by number 77 Squadron from the RAAF base Williamtown. 77 Squadron has a proud history since its formation in March 1942, during the Second World War. Most recently, 77 Squadron deployed to Operation Okra to fly operations over Iraq, continuing their proud tradition and service. to lay a floral tribute at the Bomber, Bomber Command Memorial to do so now.